So today, we're gonna be doing a Smashing 4 tier list. I haven't done this in over a year whenever the champion wasn't even out yet, but we're gonna be doing it with the brand new heroes and of course all the changes that the heroes received, and we're gonna be ranking them from S to F and see, uh, in my opinion, of course, where they rank in the game. Let's see how I rank them. My name is Two Mike, and I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Alrighty, shout out to the person down here for recommending me to actually do this. I haven't done this since June or July of 2022. It was right before the uh, the champion came out. At least for sure, I remember that. Um, let's start off with the Warlord. For those who remember, uh, who remember, the Warlord used to be the best hero to use in the entire game uh, in 2021. So thankfully, he received insane nerfs that now he... He's become, you could say, balanced to say the least. So, I mean, him giving attack buffs to other heroes is still pretty good. So I'm going to put him in the B tier. Uh, I believe he I believe he does belong there. You know, whenever you face Warlord, you just got to worry about him buffing up other heroes and what if they go next. So, in my opinion, I do believe the Warlord does go there, you know? All right. Canamancer. Canamancer is incredibly strong. When she first came out, she was actually very, very, very weak. But... They gave her a buff, at least to the cats, and now the cats just does insane amount of damage. And whenever you have a cats all over the board, it's going to be very, very difficult to honestly just to handle them, you know, especially if you get pushed towards the cats. So in my opinion, I do believe she is A tier. She is not, you know, incredibly difficult to handle, so that's why she is not in the S tier, you know. But A tier, I do believe the Canamancer does belong there. Jossum. Now, Jossum has received plenty of nerfs. Whenever he first came out, he used to be S tier. Not gonna lie, he used to be S tier, but now he has received so many nerfs. It's pretty good to, or it's pretty um, easy to handle them now. Now him paired up with the Enchanters is incredibly strong, but if you don't have the Enchanters in the board, the Jossum is actually not that um, scary when you face him, you know? So I'm actually going to put Jossum in the B tier. B tier, you know, he doesn't do a lot of damage unless he is enchanted, of course. Um, honestly, nothing, I, I don't get to worry about facing the, you know, the, the, the Jossum like that, you know? All right, champion. Champion. Whenever he first came out, I honestly thought he was weak. And uh, I was horribly mistaken. The champion is, was, used to be the best hero in the game. Of course, when he first came out. Uh, but thankfully, he has received... Lots of nerf as well, just like, you know, the Jawsome and the, uh, the Canamancer right there. Um, actually, the Canamancer received buff, but he, she did get uh, respeed, or receive a speed nerf. I cannot speak, sorry. Anyway, Champion used to be strong. He got nerfed. Um, he, I mean, not even his ability is scary anymore, honestly. His damage got nerfed. His health got nerfed. Everything got nerfed, even his ability. So honestly, I'm going to put him in the C tier. It's, he is really not that scary to face anymore honestly whenever i face champion I'm like eh, okay i mean nothing no i don't get scared you know where i don't get scared um assassin okay assassin he hasn't gotten touched i believe at all in the entire game other than uh switching his ability from you know specific number from um percentage based um but regardless his damage didn't get touched, his ability, his health didn't get touched, and his ability got touched because of whenever they transitioned from percentage base to um, specific number. Believe it or not, he is still quite strong. Whenever you're, whenever he goes, he actually does a decent amount of damage, like 70 at level 9. Um, I'm actually going to put him in the A tier. He is not S tier, thankfully, because he doesn't have a lot of health. If he had more health, he would have definitely been in the S tier, in my opinion. Blaze. Blaze, an amazing attacker. She did receive plenty of nerfs as well. But uh, even with the nerfs, she is actually still pretty dangerous to face. At least in my opinion. So, um, she just does a lot of damage. Of course, she does, you know, thankfully she has uh, low health. But she actually still does a lot of damage, in my opinion. So, even though with the, with the nerfs that she received, I'm going to put her in the A tier. If... If we're talking about the Blaze when she first came out, S tier, all the way, S tier. She is just freaking strong. I mean, it's just a burn damage as well that she can do. It's just incredibly strong, in my opinion. Um, Archer. Archer, such a, you know, very normal 
common hero. Very balanced. She did get touched with damage and, of course, the ability damage. And then they reverted, they reverted on her damage or her ability back to the way it was. I don't know why they did that, but they did it. And uh, thankfully, the archer is not as strong as it was before, especially with all these new heroes uh, all over the board, you know. So I'm going to put her in the B tier. I think the archer does belong there. Whenever you face the archer, she is one of the highest damaging units in the game. The arrows can uh, just snipe anyone, dealing multiple damage, you know. So I believe she does belong there. Of course, she is one of the heroes that has the least amount of health. Thankfully, that's a thing for her, or else she would have been in a higher ranking. The knight. The knight. I believe the knight is just a very, very strong common hero. You know, he does decent damage with a lot of health, and of course, he can tank more. Plus, he received a buff. He actually received a buff on his ability, so now he can tank more damage per turn, which is freaking absurd. And I'm actually going to put him in the A tier. That knight is still pretty strong. I mean, he actually is stronger than he was when I put him or when, whenever I did the, you know, the tier list over a year ago. He is just incredibly, incredibly strong. All right, the skeleton. Oh my goodness, the skeleton. Now, the skeleton is an okay hero. He does decent damage, decent, decent health. The problem is... There's two heroes that literally just negates and completely makes the skeleton useless. And that is the warrior and the mummy. And right now, the warrior and the mummy are being overly used, especially the mummy. They're being overly, overly used. So the skeleton is literally completely useless. So I would put him in the D or the F tier. It's one of these two. I'm going to put him... I'm going to put him in the D tier for now because not everybody, thankfully, is using... Actually, no. F tier. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The skeleton, you know, he, he, you can easily counter him. You can easily counter him. Plus, you know, the mummy and the warrior, like I said, th they both just completely make the skeleton useless. I do apologize for the skeleton, but I'm going to have to do that. Sorry, skeleton. All right. Banshee. Banshee, she is a great hero. She actually does a decent amount of damage, decent health. And she actually gives speed buffs to everyone. So honestly, the Banshee is a really, really good hero. The only counters to the Banshee is the Naga and the Armadillo. But um, not everybody is using them, of course. Um, I'm actually going to put the Banshee... Banshee in the A tier. I'm going to put the Banshee in the A tier. I do believe, you know, she is a really good hero. She is a very good um, enchantment hero. Decent damage. Enchants. It's... Just a good hero overall. All right, Goblin, Goblin, uh, the literally the very first hero that came out in this game. Goblin, very low dam or very low health, but does insane damage whenever you do wall bounces. Now, not everyone, especially myself, can do those wall bounces to perfection. You know, like I suck. I I try to do at least one wall bounce and then hit him, or at least try to get two maybe and then hit him. But sometimes I just completely miss. You know, um. But in my opinion, he is very balanced when it comes to health and damage. So I'm going to put him in the B tier. He is balanced. He is very, very, very balanced in my opinion. All right, we got the Orc. The Orc, Sally, he is not being used as much anymore. Because, you know, you got the Wizard. You got the Johnson. You got the Champion. You got so many Splashers that, you know, you can just pick them instead of using the Orc. Now, the Orc does have a decent damage and uh, lots of health. But even with those things, the orc just, he just doesn't shine as he used to be anymore. Or as, as he used to anymore. So I'm actually going to put him in the D tier. I mean, you can still use him, of course. It's not like he gets hard counter like the skeleton. So I'm going to put him in uh, the orc in the D tier. And uh, let's, go, let's continue on. The satyr. Now, the satyr, of course, you gotta have to use the satyr with an enchantment hero. Because if not, the satyr is just useless. So, whenever you use the satyr to enchant, he is... Hmm, honestly, this is not... This is actually tough. It's either A or B tier. A or B tier. It's one of those two. I honestly don't know. I'm going to put him in the... I'm going to put him in the B tier. Just in case, if, you know, if you use, like, the armadillo to remove the enchantment, then he becomes useless again. You know, the satyr can be countered. That's the thing. The satyr can be countered, 
by Naga Armadillo or just enchanting him with something else. Even though he'll still have the attack buff, at least he'll have the you know an enchantment uh, that's negative, like poison or to receive more damage or whatnot. You know, just those enchantments just to counter the Seder right there. All right, we got the Phoenix. The Phoenix, like I said, I don't like to use the Phoenix at all because he is one of the weakest heroes in the game when it comes to health. But they actually buffed up the, the Phoenix's attack power. Now the Phoenix is in the top four of the highest damaging units in the entire game at level nine and of course at max level. Um, and they buffed up his ability to now deal insane explosive damage whenever he gets revived. Um, but if it wasn't for his health, he would be in the higher tier. So I'm going to put him B. He is balanced in my opinion. Very well uh, by Smashing 4 for balancing the hero right there. Um, Thunder Idol. Thunder Idol, for some reason, they buffed up the Thunder Idol whenever he was mentioned in the last update where he got, you know, balanced. For some reason, they buffed up the, the Thunder Idol. I have no idea why they decided to do that. They just buffed up the, the Thunder Idol. Now he is incredibly strong. For some reason, they just decided to do that. So I'm going to put the Thunder Idol in the A tier. The A tier, I mean, will we get S tiers? That's something that we have to figure out. I'll get there whenever we get there. If we if we actually have S tiers. But yeah, Thunder Idol, incredibly strong. Don't know why they decided to buff him up, but they did. My opinion, he, he didn't even need to get buffed. All right, Armadillo. Armadillo used to be not the greatest hero, honestly, but since they enchant, since they actually, you know, added more enchantment heroes, um, like the mummy, the armadillo has now becoming, you know, very revel, uh, relevant. They're using him more, of course, and of course, whenever you place bombs, it, it's just a decent amount of damage right there. But thankfully, you know, he can be countered. You know, thankfully, he doesn't have too much health. Just average. The damage is also pretty. Pretty above average. His ability is good, but thankfully, not nothing too overpowered, you know. So I'm going to put him in the B tier. Let me know down, let me know down in the comments below if you guys agree or disagree with me. I'm pretty sure most of you guys are going to disagree with me and a lot of things. But remember, guys, this is just my tier list. If you guys have your own opinions, let me know. I would like to discuss it with you, of course. Um, Cultus, Cultus. He is very good whenever you use the runes. The runes does a lot of damage. Such an insane amount of damage. But of course, you just gotta use him properly, you know? Um, Speedy Cultist is really, really, really good. But, you know, his health is, you know, not the... Actually, actually, his health is actually pretty good. Pretty good. The damage is not the greatest, but his ability is what makes him shine. But I'm actually going to put him... Should I put him in the A tier or the B tier? I think I'll put him in the B tier for now. It's either it's either A or B tier. I'm going to put him in the B tier. I believe that's okay for the for the cultist right now. Um, that's just me. I believe the cultist is okay where he is right now in the B tier. That's just me though. Um, next up we got the giant. Now, like I said with the Joss, uh, not with the Johnson, with the with the orc. Um, you got splashers that does. Much better ability damage than the than the giant, you know, like I said, the champion, the ice queen, the Jossum. You got so many of these heroes that, you know, that does a better job than the giant. The only thing that, that's going to giant is his health. But um, regardless, the giant just gets outshined, so I'm going to put him in the C tier. I believe the giant does belong there. Not, not bad for the giant, you know. He definitely just deserves a little bit of love, in my opinion. Alright, we got the, the werewolf. The werewolf used to be a beast for some reason whenever they decided to give him, give her such an insane health buff for some reason. Uh, but thankfully they decided to nerf her, thank goodness, because she was incredibly overpowered. But we're, if we're talking about right now, um, the werewolf, she is a tanky hero that whenever she gets hit, she actually gets her attack buff. But I actually don't see the werewolf being used that often anymore. So I think the werewolf did get what she what she deserved, you know. I'm going to put her in the B tier. I think before I put it in the in the in the D or the C tier because the werewolf just just is not being used, you know. But I think she uh, the werewolf does belong there, you know. All right, we got the berserker. Now the berserker, you can actually make the berserker useless, you know, like just deal enough damage for the berserker to not still reach half health, and then whenever 
you go next to try to take out the, the Berserker, you can actually take him out before even he, he even uses his ability. Before he even uses his ability, the Berserker's just weak, man. He doesn't do a lot of damage. He is not the greatest common hero at all. He used to be strong but whenever this, uh, this game first came out, but now... The Berserker, you have so many better options to use. I mean, sure, whenever you get it to half health, he is pretty good. But honestly, he is not the greatest common hero. I'm going to put him in the C tier. It was either D or C. I'm going to put him in the C tier because whenever he does have his attack buff and you're actually able to use him, he, of course, does a lot of damage. But if he doesn't, then, of course, D or F tier, honestly. Puppet Master. The Puppet Master did receive a buff on himself and the puppets in general so the puppet finally did did get some love here but um honestly the puppet master is not as strong i think he is balanced honestly he's he's pretty balanced so i'm going to put it in the b tier he is pretty balanced in my opinion he definitely deserves to be there um pirate oh my goodness pirate like i said like i said before with the giants and the splashers Pirates and healers, you know, like you got the vampire, you got the frog mystic, you got the priest, you got so many better heroes to use for heals, you know. Now, if if the if the pirate is a, I mean, the pirate is a common hero that you can actually level that uh, level him up easily. So I I can understand if you have to use the pirate because he has a high level. But when it comes to actually trying to use a heal deck, why would use the why would use the pirate? And of course, the mummy since the mummy came out. Honestly, he makes a pirate completely useless if you enchant the pirate. Uh, honestly, you have better better choices to use for heals. I'm going to put him in the F tier. I'm sorry. I'm going to put him in the F tier because the mummy can make him completely useless. And uh, you got better options when it comes to heals, you know? Like, you got so many better options, right? That's just me. Alright, so you got the Yeti. Now, of course, the Yeti is pretty strong whenever you use the ability damage. He gains his speed buff and deals double damage if you get a third or four hit and what and so on, you know? Um, thankfully, his speed is not as crazy as, as he was when he first came out. So, put him in the B tier. That's good for him. I feel like he is balanced, you know? Robot. The robot finally did get some love. Not gonna lie, the the robot finally got some love. They buffed up his attack and bomb damage, and uh, honestly, he is actually better than he, of course, what he what he used to do or used to be before. So I'm going to put him in. It's either B or C. You know, you got better options, of course, but the robot. Mm, honestly, I'm going to put him in the B tier. I feel like he is very balanced. In my opinion, he is very, very, very balanced. Wizard. Wizard used to be incredibly strong. Thankfully, the, he did receive a huge nerf. Thankfully. But even with that, the wizard can st sometimes be pretty strong. I'm not gonna lie. Pretty strong, especially facing against heroes that has a lot of health. But thankfully, and like I always say, you know, he is pretty balanced again. So I'm going to put him in the B tier as well. He is pretty balanced. Not gonna lie. He is pretty balanced. Uh, we got the striker now. Striker... That he received a buff for some reason. The striker did not need a buff at all. Why did they buff up the striker? I have no idea. No idea. Um, but now you know the striker paired up with the golem, the zombie, the naga, literally pretty much any hero. He, the striker is just incredibly strong. Thankfully, if it wasn't for his damage, that he is pretty weak. He would be in the S tier, but right now I'm going to put it in the A tier. His ability, it just, it's just too much. It's just really too much, in my opinion, you know? Um, Drakeling. They buffed up the Drakeling. They buffed up the, the Drakeling when it comes to fireball damage. And if you, you, if you don't, if you, oh my gosh, I cannot speak, sorry. If you know how to use his ability when it comes to bouncing off fireballs and whatnot, he can be pretty dangerous. Um, but, you know... I mean, the Fireballs is still pretty good. Honestly, I feel like the Drakeling is pretty balanced as well. The Drakeling is pretty balanced. I'm going to put him in the B tier. B tier. Um, Rocketeer. You guys know how much I hate. I hate facing the Rocketeer. Holy guacamole. Why 
and they also buffed up the Rocketeer whenever he was for, uh, last balanced. Why? Why did they buff up the Rocketeer? Are you kidding me, uh, my dude? Um, it's either S or A, but since the Rocketeer is horrible, whenever he is the last man unit, I'm going to put him in the A tier. Because why? Why would you buff up the Rocketeer? Like, what was the point? You know, like, why? All right, we got the Kong. Kong... Kong is a very situational hero, and that's a problem with him. The Kong can only be used in heal decks. And since the mummy came out, he literally can make the Kong completely useless. And that is a problem for the Kong. But the Kong's ability, it's pretty good now. Whenever he gets healed, he does a lot, a lot of damage than he used to do before. So I'm going to put the Kong in the C tier. He is a very situational hero, you know. He definitely needs more love or... The other heroes needs a lot of, you know, nerfs for the Kong to be, you know, in the B tier again. But yeah, the Kong, he needs a little bit more love for some to, for the Kong to be in the B tier. Um, Frog Mystic. Frog Mystic, they buffed him up, and now he is a, he is a pretty great hero, not gonna lie. Insane hero. But again, you know, you got the Mummy. The Mummy is pretty strong, obviously. Um... Well, the, honestly, the mummy is making me think of how to put these heroes here. Just the mummy alone is making me think of how to put these heroes in the in the deck or in the in their T list, you know. You know. So it's either B or A tier. Um, I'm going to put the Frog Mystic. Well, I honestly don't know. I'm going to put the Frog Mystic in the A tier, and solely because he can also heal himself. He can also heal himself, which is honestly very huge if he is the last man hero standing alive. You know, he can be pretty, pretty good. Next up, we got the priest. Now, the priest, you know, of course, he can heal everyone except himself, which is pretty good, obviously. Because when if he heals, if he heals himself as well, that would be an incredibly strong hero. Very difficult to face against and whatnot. But he is not better than the frog mystic. In my opinion, that's just me. Frog mystic is better than the priest. But Priest, you know, being able to heal, uh, heal up everyone every single turn is pretty good, obviously. So I'm, good to, I'm going to put in the B tier. He is balanced. So good for you. All right, Zombie. Zombie used to be the worst enchanters in the game until recently. They buffed up his ability just a smidge. Just a smidge. But, um, you know, you got the Shaman. You got the Mummy. You got the Sorceress. You got the enchanters. You got all these other enchant uh, enchanting heroes, and all of them is just better than the zombie. I mean, sure you can deal. De of course, you can deal damage every single turn with the zombie, but sadly, you know the zombie doesn't do a lot of damage at all. And uh, he, I mean, he is tanky, but he just doesn't do a lot of damage. I'm going to put him the C tier because. He is a, the worst enchanting hero in the game. I I love the zombie. I really do. But sadly, he is the worst enchanting hero in the game. Um, you got the Barbarian. Barbarian did receive that much needed nerf. The Barbarian was doing way too much damage. She can still do a lot of damage. That's the thing. She can still deal, do, or deal a lot of damage. Now, um, she definitely is balanced. But I don't think, you know, she is still, you know, strong enough to be in the A tier in my opinion unless you use her you use her like the assassin then of course she can be pretty strong honestly yeah let's put it in the A tier because if you just focus on dealing damage with the barbarian the barbarian whenever it is her turn you can just pretty much one shot everyone so I'm going to put it in the A tier she is strong she is very 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 strong all right warrior oh my goodness warrior the warrior <sighs> With the rework that she got, I'm surprised that she has still hasn't gotten touched when it comes to, you know, lowering her ability because her ability is just incredibly too high. What makes up her ability, you know, being not being too strong for the warrior is her damage. Her damage is incredibly low, but regardless, um, her ability is just way too high, you know. It's either B or A tier. It's one of those two, you know. Uh, in my opinion, I think... And you know, the warrior is pretty balanced. I'm going to put her in the B tier. That's just me, though. Um, Mice Bandit. Do you guys know how much I hated the Mice Bandit back in 2022 and 2021? Holy guacamole. The Mice Bandit did receive plenty of nerfs. 
but honestly, he can still he can still deal a lot of damage. That's the thing, deal a lot of damage. But he is one of the weakest heroes in the game when it comes to health wise. Um, so, um, uh, in my opinion, he is balanced. The Mind Spanner is finally balanced. Of course, he he's of course still deals a lot of damage, but um, he is finally balanced. Of course, not like before in 2021, 2022 when he was just all over the place. Everybody's just using Mind Balance for the wins, you know. All right. We got the blacksmith. The blacksmith and enchanter that gives everyone a defensive buff, especially towards the satyr right here. The satyr, of course, satyr paired up with the defensive buff, in my opinion, is one of the best combos in the game. You can use enchantress satyr or enchantress Jawsome, and you know she is just pretty good overall, you know. But when it comes to the blacksmith giving everyone a defensive buff, I would say that the blacksmith would be in. I'll put him in the B tier. Yeah, I'll put in the B tier. Man, a lot of heroes are, are pretty, you know, balanced. This is just my opinion. They're balanced. But if you guys disagree with me, by all means, just let me know down in the comments below. But yeah, I believe this is okay right now. You know, a couple of A's, a lot of B's, a couple of C's, one D, and two F's. You know, in my opinion, it's pretty okay overall right now. We got the Ice Queen. The Ice Queen can only use her ability when it is her turn. She did get a buff. She did get a buff whenever the last time I did this. A much needed buff. So I would put the Ice Queen. You know, paired up with the you know the zombie, the striker, and the golem, whatnot. You know, using the ice queen can be pretty good. Even as a last man hero, she is really good because then she can be able to use her ability every single turn. So I'm going to put her in the B tier. Huntress. Huntress, thankfully, she did get plenty of nerfs. So now, you know. She still does, you know, decent damage, decent health and whatnot, but she is finally balanced. And of course, the Naga and the Armadillo are the two hard counters for the Huntress right there. So I'm just going to put her in the B tier as well. Uh, we got the Genie. Now, the Genie, he does a lot of damage to the tankiest heroes in the game. But not everybody is using the tankiest heroes in the game. Because you got the Mummy. You got, you know, you got other heroes that does a lot of damage. And whatnot, and you can just use other heroes to deal more damage than the genie can, especially when you're facing heroes that has, a, you know, not or doesn't have a lot of health, you know. So I'm going to put the genie in this. It's either C or B. He is balanced. Yeah, he is balanced. The genie. Mm, this is going to be controversial, uh, controversial. I'm going to put in the C tier. I know I'm going to get a little bit of backlash for the genie right there. But I believe, you know, you can use bet uh, other heroes to just deal more damage, you know. It's just, you know. Oh boy, the Sentinel. The Sentinel did receive a rework. The Sentinel did receive a rework, but he is still quite strong. He, of course, now the Sentinel has the most amount of health in the entire game. Being the tankiest hero in the game, of course, being able to get pushed by everyone to deal lots of damage is either S or A. Um, mm, S or A. It's one of these two. Is he better than the Assassin? Is he better than the Frog Mystic? Thunder Idol? Rocketeer? No. This could be controversial too, but I'm going to put him in the A tier as well. Still no S tier. Still no S tier. Oh, I didn't mean to hit, uh, touch the goblin right there. Vampire. Whenever I did this, the vampire was actually in the S tier. But things changed, of course. Things changed. I mean, you got all these new, you know, all these heroes that came um, since the last time I did this. Plus the mummy not making the vampire being, you know, useless whenever he gets enchanted. But regardless, if you don't face the mummy, the vampire is a tier. Oh, what the, what happened to my vampire? Okay, there you go. Vampire is a tier. The vampire is, my opinion, a tier. It's all because since, if it wasn't for the mummy, he would have been S tier again. If it wasn't for the mummy. Sorceress. Sorceress, an incredibly annoying hero whenever he enchant or she enchants all four of your heroes just to receive damage. Or exceed or receive extra damage. Um, she is incredibly annoying. Plus, does the decent damage, but her health honestly just makes her um, low tier or not low tier, you know, middle tier. So I'm going to put her in the B tier again. That's just mean, you know. The sorceress is a balanced hero, thankfully, because you know her health is 
lowered and whatnot. All right, we got the Naga now. The Naga is probably one of my favorite heroes in the game ever since. Even when I got her, I used to like her because whenever we enchant heroes and she just deals double damage, she's just incredibly great, you know? But even even if the Naga doesn't that doesn't attack hero when they're when they're enchanted or whenever she attacks heroes when they're not enchanted she actually does an okay amount of damage you know you know higher than the knight you know i would actually put her um bra one of these two i could be biased yeah i'm being biased i'm going to put the, the naga in the a tier i'm being biased i know I know I'm being biased. I definitely know I'm being biased right there. But I'm definitely going to put the Naga in the A tier. She just does incredibly um, a decent amount of damage whenever the heroes are enchanted. And even when they're not enchanted, she does a decent amount of damage. That's just me. Shaman. Oh my goodness, the Shaman. I know a lot of you guys have, hate the Shaman. I love the Shaman. But whenever the Shaman enchants me, I hate my life. The Shaman is such an incredibly annoying hero to face against because he just makes... Everybody almost useless by nerfing everybody's damage. He definitely goes in the A tier. By far, he definitely goes in the A tier. Paladin. Oh my goodness. I I, I know that was a point um a point in time, actually kind of recently, a couple of months ago, where everybody was asking to nerf the paladin. The paladin's um heals is just way way too much guys the paladin is way too much um for some of you guys honestly he he could be in the s tier but of course he is not the greatest last man hero and of course the mummy of course now in the game he can just you know stop everyone from healing i'm going to put him in the a tier though because his heals honestly has saved me so many times in the games you know that he, does, he definitely deserves to be in the A tier. He, the Paladin, in my opinion, needs to be nerfed. His ability, at least. Uh, Frost Fox. Frost Fox, of course, being able to heal up whenever he hits enchanted heroes. Being one of the strongest heroes when it comes to damage in the game. Uh, but he is pretty weak when it comes to health. And, of course, um, honestly, he is a pretty good hero overall. But he is not overpowered. He is balanced. I'm, go I'm, go I'm going to put the Frost Fox in the B tier. He is balanced. Um, Jaguar. Jaguar, you know, the Jaguar didn't even get touched at all. These, wow, well, actually a couple of months, actually a couple of years, he hasn't been touched. So the Jaguar is an attacker, of course, an amazing attacker that hits double damage for the heroes that goes next. So he's basically like a Naga, but the Naga, of course, she needs to attack when it, uh, whenever they get enchanted. The Jaguar only needs to hit any, anyone that goes next. I'm going to put her, put him in the A tier. And I'm actually going to switch it up and actually put the Naga in the B tier. The Jaguar, in my opinion, is much better than the Naga. The Naga does not does not deserve to be next to the Jaguar. That's just me. Let me know down in the comments below if you guys agree with me on that or not. Uh, we got the Scarecrow. Holy guacamole, whenever the, scare, the Scarecrow came out, way overpowered. What were they thinking? It's my it's my question. What were they thinking when they released the Scarecrow like he used to be before? Holy guacamole. The Scarecrow received like three or four nerfs and, and he is actually still pretty good. He is, of course, much better to deal with now, but he is still pretty, pretty good. I'm going to put him in the, in the A tier. He is still good. He is still good, ladies and gentlemen. We get the Farmer. All right, so the Farmer the, uh, throws a pumpkin at the lowest... Um, the lowest health unit in the game, or in the match, I should say at least. Um, he, she is good. She is good. She does decent damage. The pumpkin can actually deal splash damage. She is pretty good. She is pretty good. I'm going to put her in the B tier. She is balanced. She is definitely balanced. You got the druid coming up next. The druid. Who? The druid. Let's see. The druid can snipe the highest health unit in the match. Does 50 damage at level 9. 50 damage base. 50 damage ability. But um, honestly, when it comes to using, when it comes to direct damage decks, you got the you know the farmer, you got the golem, you got other heroes that honestly it's just better to use in my opinion. So I would use or put the druid in the C tier. All right, we got the golem now. The golem, the the poor guy has received so many nerfs, probably in the entire game, for some reason. 
but now he is not as strong as he used to be before. He is definitely balanced. I'm going to put him in the B tier. Wraith. Holy guacamole. The Wraith used to be everywhere because everybody just going back and forth. Especially paired up with the Treant. Holy guacamole. And the Rocketeer too. The Wraith is an incredibly, incredibly strong hero. Um, thankfully with his speed nerf, he is much more easily counterable. And of course the Cultists can counter him. Pretty much anyone can counter him if, if they go back and forth between the Wraith and whatnot. But paired up with the Treant and, you know, you can use the Rockets here. The Sentinel. You got so many heroes that the the Enchanters, oh my gosh. I'm just, I'm just thinking about this now. The Wraith is actually, even though he did receive a speed nerf, the Wraith is really strong in a lot of decks. I'm actually going to put Wraith in the S tier. I think the Wraith deserves to be in the S tier, ladies and gentlemen, in my opinion. Oh my goodness, Enchantress. Enchantress, one of the best uh, enchantment heroes in the game. Holy guacamole. The Enchantress just fits in any deck. Holy guacamole. Honestly, she is such a versatile deck or a versatile hero that does a lot of damage. But low health, but still... The value that she can get in a lot of decks is just incredibly high. I'm also going to put her in the S tier. I do believe she also belongs in the S tier. Let me know in the comments below if you guys disagree with me. We got the Treant. I mean, the Treant, one of the tankiest heroes in the game, does decent damage. Him being able to buff up anyone, whoever touches him, to deal that dam to deal the extra damage. Honestly, not, not bad, you know, not bad. He is, he is pretty good. He is pretty good. Uh, but of course, not overpower, not overpowering, you know. I'm going to put him in the B tier. I'm going to put him in the B tier. He is balanced. Um, Bomber. Bomber. The second least health hero in the game, but the highest damaging hero in the game. Play, when Whenever he dies, he places a dynamite that does a lot of damage. But of course, you got to prepare for that. You have to make the right place in order to just try to maximize your value when it comes to dealing damage and using the dynamite for damage. Very difficult to do so, but um, I'm going to put in the B, in the, yeah, in the B tier. He is balanced. Um, not dangerous. I mean, of course he's dangerous. It's just, um, thankfully, nothing too crazy, you know? All right, we got the Archon. Archon is such an amazing hero. The Archon is such an amazing hero, giving giving your 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 heroes a defense buff and attacking everyone in the aura, or you know to make them receive more damage. And that, in my opinion, is really really good. He might actually be S tier even with the nerfs that he has received. Yeah, I'm going to put him in the S tier. I do believe he does belong in the S tier right there, man. All right, we got the mummy. The, the newest hero in the game, we got the mummy right here. Holy guacamole, the mummy is... Pfft. The mummy is pretty much all over the place right now. Being able to stop everyone from healing. It's, it's another enchanter, so he works super well with the with the armadillo and the naga. Preventing everyone from doing you know their other things. Plus being able to hit the last hero again. Just to get the extra damage and, and whatnot. He is really good, honestly. Is he overpowered? No. In my opinion, no, but he is good. He is very, very good. I'm going to put him in the A tier. I believe he does belong in the A tier right there. We got the Spellwing. Holy guacamole. I did not expect the Spellwing to be as strong as he was, but as he is now. And he is actually really strong. Um, being able to place Echoes on the board. And the problem is... He can place infinite amount of echoes on the board. That's the problem. If he has a limit like the Thunder Ponce's ability, the spell wing will be in a lower tier. But being able to deal damage and heal up by using echoes, he has to go in the S tier. He has to go in the S tier. In my opinion, he definitely belongs in the S tier. Um, even though you know you got the mummy around to stop healing, whenever you go through the echo, you just remove the enchantment. So, there's that, you know. If they nerf the spell wing to make the spell wing limit the amount of echoes he can place on the board, he'll be A or B tier to make him balanced. 
All right, we got Thunderpaws and Holy Guacamole. Thunderpaws used to be the GOAT. The GOAT in Smashing 4. Placing so many orbs on the board. Him, the Thunderpaws, was giving everyone monster kills. Holy Guacamole, what were the developers thinking whenever the Thunderpaws came out? Used to be the strongest hero in the game. Much better than, you know, the Champion when he first came out. Much better than the Scarecrow when he first came out. Pretty much, literally... The Thunderpaws, if we were talking about the Thunderpaws when he first came out, he would be SSS tier. Like, he was that strong. But now, with the nerfs that he received, or the rework, so to speak, he's still A tier. He still does a lot of damage whenever he doesn't have, you know, the orbs on the board. They gave him a health buff as well. They just nerfed his, his ability, which is still quite strong. Which is still quite strong. And last and not least, we got the Gargoyle. The Gargoyle, whenever he first came out, I do, I did believe he was overpowered. Nobody believed me. So they buffed up the Gargoyle, and, every, and now everybody was using the Gargoyle and their mothers. Like, everybody was using them. So they reverted back to the original numbers that the Gargoyle has, and now everybody's still using him. So in my opinion, the Gargoyle is strong. Being able to heal himself up while dealing damage to everyone in, in an area. Um, he is good. He is definitely, definitely good. He definitely belongs in the A tier. He's not overpowered, but he definitely belongs there. And I, wow, that, that is actually it. We actually went through all the heroes right here. So the S tiers, we got Wraith, Enchantress, Archon, and the Spellwing. We got a whole bunch of A tiers. A lot of B tiers. The B tiers, you know... Yeah, you know, the developers has done a good job balancing these heroes, but of course there's more heroes that definitely needs to be balanced, like Rocketeer, please. Um, you got a couple of C tiers, not bad. One D tier, which is the orc. The orc definitely needs something to, to be in a higher tier. And of course, the skeleton and the pirate being the worst heroes in the game, in my opinion, because the mummy just can literally make them completely useless. I mean, of course, you got the vampire when it comes to facing the mummy, but still, he does a lot of damage, much more than the pirate, and he is a pretty dangerous hero to face against. Um, but yeah, this is my tier list, ladies and gentlemen. This is my tier list. If you guys have any, uh, if you guys have any, um, if you guys think that these heroes need to be rearranged, just let me know down in the comments below what you guys think. And we'll just have a little discussion in the comment section. And with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And if you did, please make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel for more Smashing 4 videos. This is the tier list. Let me know again, guys. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys think of the tier list. This took me such a long time. But honestly, I have fun talking about my thoughts on each and every one of these heroes. That literally came to the game. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, guys, if you guys have any uh, other recommendations that you want to see, just let me know down in the comments. Uh, comments below and i certainly do it for you guys thank you so much for watching this video and thanks again for the continued support i will see you in the next one take care